Hello guys, um, today we're going to talk about the movie Doctor Sleep. Um, this movie was released in 2019. It's rated R and it's two, in, 2 hours and 32 minutes long. It has 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb with about 100,000 issues. Or both and has 59% on Metacritic with about 46 critics. It stars Ewan McGregor, who was in Moulin Rouge, and Rebecca Ferguson, who was in, in um, the Mission Impossible, the new Mission Impossible movies, including like Fallout. Um, uh, and then, uh, the movie is directed by Mike Flanagan, who also directed, uh, The Haunting at, he also was involved in The Haunting of Hill House Netflix series. Um, Rotten Tomatoes movie has 77% by critics, with 309 critics, it is certified fresh, and 89% by audiences, with about 14,000 as user audiences, and the critics consensus on Rotten Tomatoes is, Dr. Sleep forsakes the elemental terror of its predecessor for a more contem contemplative for a more contemplative sequel that balances poignant themes against spine tingling chills. The movie isn't available to stream, but it's available to rent and buy on Amazon, YouTube, Vudu, Google Play, iTunes, Fandango, Redbox, and it's only available to buy on the Microsoft Store. The movie and the movie was is is going to be on DVD. Um, was released on DVD this year. This year, so as you know, if any brave soul decided to dare watch my top 60 favorite movies of all time from like 2017, which is over two years ago, we're going to come on free. Um, it is one of my favorite movies, The Shining. So, and a lot of it is due just because, due to, um, due to, um, it's a, not only a, St a Stanley Kubrick movie, it's a Stephen King movie, and I'm sucker for both, so having them, having a collaboration like that is just huge for me. Now, this movie's tricky because this movie's based on the book Dr. Sleep that's also written by Stephen King, and it's actually... It's either the only sequel or one of the very, very few sequels he's ever written to one of his book, own books. And and based on read, the reason why he did that because they kept all the fans kept asking what happened to Danny after The Shining, and he kept making jokes and stuff until one day he's like, you know what? There's something there. So he wrote it, and it did well. Um, and yeah, this is this is a sequel to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, but yet it doesn't stray too far from the original book except for the climax a little bit and we'll get to that and I won't say anything because you know spoilers but but it kind of I will say this the original Shining does deviate quite a bit from the Stanley Kubrick book in a lot of ways and it's, it's no secret Stephen King doesn't like the Stanley Kubrick version and if you read the book and you're a Stephen King fan and you're a fan of the book or whatever, you might agree with Stephen King. Personally, I've never, actually I've never read a Stephen King book. I've kind of fell off reading for quite a while. It's just with everything else to do, it's kind of hard for me to get back into just reading. Um, but yeah, um, so the thing, so the thing with this story is that it, it's, it's very well done. It is a horror movie, but it's not really... They are right. There's not an elemental terror, per se. It's more of a... Uh, it's a lot... It's more... It's more traditional in some... Because here's the thing. In the original movie, The Shining, um, the actual Shining element is only like one of equal parts of the story that's going on with in terms of all the weird shit going on. But this movie, this movie's all about The Shining. So if you like The Shining element in The Shining, this one expands on it a lot. Does it cover every single possibility? Eh, there, there is probably a couple you would like to see it delve in a little bit more into, but for the most part it does. And in terms of like connecting to the original movie, it does a great job of that. It recreates so much great shit so well. Um, the horror is great, the story is great. Everything about this film is really solid, except for one little element. And I, I heard a little bit of slight criticism of this element, and I 
I agree to a degree, and that's in the climax. Now, it's no secret in the trailers that they do go back to the Overlook Hotel. Um, that element of the story, it delivers and does well, but when you watch the movie, you kind of wish it just kind of stuck to what was going on. Because cause at the beginning of the movie, you know, there's, I mean, references and flashbacks are quickly spread throughout, more so in the beginning, and it's done incredibly well in effect. But when it gets to the climax and everything, it just kind of, the, it works, but then after you watch it and it sinks in a little bit, you're like, you know what, I could have, I could have done without that. I would have been fine without that. And that's kind of the th thing, is that it would have been fine without that. That's how good the story is, is the fact that when it does, when it does go back to the original, if kind of feel like it's not necessary. It's great, it's a bonus, but they could have done without it and it would have been fine. But it's done very well, and I love it. It's done very well. Um, I guess another minor element to the climax is that it's not overly long. It's reasonably paced and it has a time frame, but given two and a half hours, I guess I expected it to be a little bit longer, I guess, but I don't know. After one viewing, I kind of, I kind of feel like it deserves a second viewing. Otherwise, it's great. It's atmospheric. It's very well acted. It's very well written. It's it has some terrifying moments, but it, it's not a. I wouldn't call it like a. There's some good scares, but there's a lot of cool. There's some. The shining element is explored very well, and still leaves more to be explored upon. Um, in terms of this will be followed with another movie, I doubt it. It kind of leaves some things like, oh yeah, it can leave this, this, and this, uh, but I, I don't think it will. I think, I think this is just one of those things where it's just like we just made the book, we adapted it, we finally did it, and it's done. I, I can't see something like this becoming more expanded upon. In all honesty, I just can't unless they were, unless they were finally gonna do get into the Stephen King cinematic universe that's been teased for decades and never fully fulfilled. Um, but yeah, I, but overall, I think it's a great movie. I think you should check it out. If you're a fan of Stephen King, The Shining, or anything, check it out. If you're a fan of horror, check it out. Um, in terms of being horror, is it scary? There's definitely some creepy, ugh, scenes in it. Um, this, and there's, it's not jump scare, it's not relied on jump scares either, really, too. It's, it's, it's very well done in the scary department. I think if I was gonna, like I said, I think, I think the only minor thing is that the climax has a lot of extra stuff that are nice, but they could have done without and I think it would have been fine. Um, and, and, but everything else is well done. I do recommend and like I said, I do recommend this. Um, and as far as I've kind of gathered, it follows the book reasonably well for the most part. It does deviate there and there, more so in the climax a little bit, but overall it's done pretty well. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very well-made movie, and 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 yeah, and I'm glad they made the decision overall to follow the original movie because. They were tempted not to do that and just kind of follow the source material and just kind of disconnect from the original movie. And they decided not to do that and decided to connect with the movie, even though Stephen King didn't like that one. But I think I'm glad they did that because most people, most young horror fans, they usually get introduced through... If, if they... They they go get drifted toward The Shining because The Shining's a big movie. Because it's a Stephen King and a Stephen King and a Stanley Kubrick movie. I mean, something that big of a collab you're not gonna miss out on. And yeah, so it's it's definitely something I feel like a lot of hardcore horror fans get introduced to kind of more at some point. And I think if you're gonna go for that, you kind of have to have that movie involved. But yeah, I do, but like I said, I do enjoy this. Now, on a quick side note, um, 
this is going to be the last Ben Recommends episode for a bit. I'm going to launch into my vlog series. We're, I'm going to be covering the Incredible Hulk TV show every episode in the TV movies. And I'll last a pretty good chunk of the summer into early fall. Now, the 100th episode of Ben Recommends, I do plan on releasing probably some point down the line, non-scheduled, because it's going to be a, it's going to be one of those, like, unique reviews of something. So, it probably, plan on more towards the tail end of the vlog series, because I'm going to be too busy recording on those that, to do it early on, so, kind of plan on seeing that at some point, and yeah. Uh, just that's just to kind of give a heads up on that. But yeah, guys, I recommend Doctor Sleep. It's a great movie. I, I recommend it and check it out. Check it out. And yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and like the videos and have a good day.